having a little fun, Nims. What's wrong? It's this house, this island. It's only for a weekend. It doesn't bother you that we can't leave where we want to? That we're trapped here? That we can't call out? It's true, there's no cell phone service and no landline. That we don't know why we were hired, that we don't know any of the guests who want to spend the weekend. That we get a pizza delivered? Now that bothers me. Oh, Clayhorn, I think it's weird. Well, as long as we're getting paid, what difference does it make? Besides, it's a great place to hide out. What if something was to happen? We Nothing. couldn't leave? Nothing is going to happen. We work the weekend, collect our money, and Monday morning we're out of here. Isn't that what Mr. Reef's letter said? A letter from him we've never even met? With a list of guests we've also never met. Why doesn't Mr. Reef contact us in person instead of sending letters? This is a very wealthy man. People with money don't have time to visit the hired help. That's what lawyers are for. Personally, I don't like it. I think it adds to the drama. What's that? It sounds like a bell. It sounds like a bell. You better go check on the rooms. I'll go get it. Dr. Horatio Miles. Thank you. Where is everyone? Uh, you were the first to arrive. You mean it's just you and me? And my wife, Mims. She's upstairs. Have we met before? I hope not. Are you sure I didn't do something with your gallbladder or something like that? I'm pretty sure I would have remembered. It'll come to me. This isn't what I expected. The invitation said something about a weekend party. All very mysterious, you know. And I don't know this Mr. Reef. Mr. G. Reef. Maybe it was his gallbladder I'm thinking of. And this guest list, I don't know anyone on it. Pretty unusual, wouldn't you say? Very. Uh, another guest must have arrived. Perhaps you would like to freshen up. Um, Men's will show you to your room. Don't worry about it, I'll take care of it. Miss Emily Plain. Am I the first to arrive? I do hate being first, do you understand? No. No, I'm not the first to arrive, or no, you don't understand? Yes. Yes, I'm not the first to arrive, or no, you don't understand? Yes, I do not understand, and no, you're not the first. Okay. Uh, then it's settled. Mims will show you to your room. You'll be staying in the plain room. Mims? Ma'am? Mims? Maid. <sighs> Inspector Horatio Miles. Interesting. May I take your hat and coat? Of course. <laughs> Have we met before? Clayhorn. You're Clayhorn. Um, I don't think so. You're positive. Wait, I thought you said your name was Clayhorn. Now you're positive? That's right. I see. Then it's settled. Then we'll show you to your room. You'll be staying in the straw room. Thank you. London! Oh. Miss Dolores Biggs. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Oh, I expected an audience. Don't tell me I'm the only one here. As you wish. Am I? Excuse me? The only one here. You told me not to tell you. Quite right. I'll go to my room now. Men's will show you the way. You'll be staying in the big room. I'll see you later. I live for it. <laughs> Let's see, only four more guests to arrive. Quick, come here. Mims, can't you say I'm busy? No. Well, look. What are you doing? Butler. This can't wait. What is it? That detective. Miles. Claiborne. He's snooping about, asking questions. Questions? What kind of questions? Detective questions. You know, stuff like, just the facts, ma'am, just the facts. I think he suspects something. He didn't suspect anything. He thought he recognized me, but my disguise threw him off. No, he doesn't have a thing on us. Just do what I say and everything will be fine. But what if I can't? What if my nerves can't take it? What if the trust becomes too much? What if the pressure builds? What if I just can't take it? What if I just completely wake out? Then we'll ease your stress. Uh, another guest just arrived. Uh, why don't you go check in the snacks? <laughs> Presley York, the singer. That's Presley York. Is this it? Excuse me? The hash, the gig, the party. I mean, you're talking to the world's number one party ammo here. Umaro Nuno. So when I see the word party with a bunch of creeps I don't know, I think, hey, this might amuse me. All right, I'm here, I'm bored, I am amused. The festivities will begin at seven. The host has requested you stay in your room until... Oh yeah? Well, you tell your host that nobody tells Presley York what to do. Tell him. That's impossible, he's not even here. The host ain't here? Miss Manners ain't gonna like this. It's all right here in this letter. Let me see that letter. Baloney, I'm leaving. 
The boat that brought you to the island has already left. Then I'll swim. The waters are shark infested. Who knows? The party might be fun. Where's my room? I'll show you the way. You'll be staying in the pompous room. <laughs> Miss Heather Starlet. And Matthew Charisma. And Matthew Charisma. Not bad. If you like wealth. I do. What else do you like? Handsome men. Pardon me, but I am the mate. Did you two arrive together? That's right. My boat broke down, and Mr. Charisma's boatman was kind enough to give me a lift. Lucky. Lucky for me. Lucky for me. You really are a charmer, Mr. Charisma. Call me Matthew. All right, Matthew, and you can call me Heather. Well, if you'll excuse me, Matthew and Heather, but your rooms are ready. We'll meet down here at seven. Nims, Nims. Shh! He's listening! The credenza? Miles! Clayhorn! He's hiding in it! That detective again. Well, he was. That's We've got to do something about him. He was spying on me. We have to do something, otherwise our goose is cooked! The only cooking of geese is going to be done by us. How are the snacks? They're fine. We'll deal with Sherlock Holmes later. Hmm? Never mind that. It's almost seven and a guest still hasn't arrived. Margaret LaRue. She should have been here by now. Maybe her boat's over something. Shouldn't we look for her? In these waters, there wouldn't be anything left. Yuck. What was that? It sounded like a thud on the door. <laughs> I'll go check on it. Oh, who is it? Margaret LaRue. What's wrong with her? Blood. What is it? Blood? But you don't know what blood is? Get a grip, Mims. <laughs> Surely you don't mean she's dead. I don't know what's wrong with her, and don't call me Shirley. <laughs> what are we gonna do? Should we tell the others? Well, with that detective Miles snooping around, he'll think we're involved. We've got to hide her. We don't have time. It's seven and the guests are coming. I've got a plan. Introducing yourselves. Please! Please. Our host is requested. I keep you as comfortable as possible. I'm sure he will be with us shortly. Speaking of our host, I'd like to know if anyone here has met him. Uruguay! Claymore. <laughs> uh, my wife wins. How are the snacks? Fine, thank you. Ooh, my friends, my favorite. Really? Was it necessary to take all of them? I can't help myself. I like sweets. That's all. Not really. Sweets are just my favorite. Well, I mean, they try chocolate soldiers. Ooh, more sweets. I'll get to those later. Speaking of that, I'm terribly bored by all of this. Clayhorn, I thought you said it was going to be a party. Our host has requested I play this message. Ladies and gentlemen, please forgive me for not greeting you personally, but you will soon understand my reason. As you may have guessed, my name is not G. Reed. Good grief! G. Grief? <gasps> Mr. Grief. That's all. Not really, you see. I'm somewhat of an eccentric millionaire, and I prefer to keep my identity a secret. The reason I have called you together is because I am also an amateur mystery buff. I have always been fascinated by the idea of the perfect crime. Is there something else we could listen to? Imagine, if you will, ten strangers invited to a remote island for the weekend without communication or transportation. And one by one, each of the guests dies mysteriously. The most baffling mystery of all time. Who did it? How many will die before the mystery is solved? Will anyone be alive Monday morning when the boatman arrives? Is this some kind of joke, Clayhorn? Yeah, you seem to be the only one who knows anything about what's uh, going on. I assure you, I know nothing. Just like y'all, my instructions are on that mail. I'm only doing what my letter said. I'd like to see that letter. What is it? A piece of paper with writing on it. What does it say? Nothing. Oh my God. Matthew, read what it says. <clears throat> Play audio message when the lost big says he's bored. It's all your fault. If you haven't gotten bored, we would never be in this mess. Don't be repulsive, you silly woman. Oh, Matthew, do you say something meaningful? All right. Everybody, there's no need to panic. No need to panic and mad managed to threaten to kill us and you don't want us to panic? 
Matthew, Emily does have a point. What do you think, Inspector? I think she has a point. <laughs> this doesn't make sense. I don't even know why my name was on the list. Don't blame us. We didn't send the invitations. Yeah, why was I invited? Maybe a lack of good taste? <laughs> Your names were chosen randomly when you played the telephone book. Turn it off! Turn it off! I can't bear to listen to it anymore! Listen. I agree with Matthew Charisma. There isn't any reason to panic. Do you see any maniacs running around with guns and knives? Any dead bodies? Of course not. It's all a joke. I say we make the best of a long, boring weekend. Let's have some entertainment. Good fun. How about a song? Well, I'm a little rusty. Oh, please, Presley, anything to take our minds off this dreadful place. <laughs> I'm afraid so. York has fallen and can't get up. You don't mean... Alas. Alas, poor York. I knew her, Horatio. But how? I don't know. I'm a vet. Maybe one of these? The Madeline! Quick! Grab her! She's the killer! that killed Presley York? No! How do we know that? I literally just told you. If she is telling the truth, who else would have had the motive, the opportunity, and the audacity to ruin a perfectly good Mac room next? This isn't getting us anywhere. Even if she is guilty, she'll never confess. Then let's torture her. What about the voice on the audio message, remember? Pepper is right. This is too easy, too simple, too obvious. The woman's up an idiot. This isn't the work of someone like her, it's the work of a madman! Or mad woman. What are you suggesting, Mr. Charisma? Let's split up and make a thorough search of the house and the island. If there's someone else on the, on the island, we'll find them. If not, we'll know. No, what? I'm not sure, Miss B Biggs. I haven't figured that one out yet. Dr. Prince and I will search the top of the island. Emily and I will search upstairs. Uh oh, um, have our natural sister born with the island. Um, Mins and I will look about down here. On free, we leave. One, two, three. We have to get rid of the body. Where? In the basement. Uh, we'll hide her in the wood pile. <sighs> well, that's a load off my mind. Suppose we'd found someone. It doesn't make me feel any better. Why not? That means the killer is still at large. I hadn't thought about it like that, but now I will. Nothing. We searched everywhere. There's no possibility that someone's out there. Meaning? Unless Matthew found something, then the killer has to be on the island. Not upstairs. We searched every room. We even looked under the beds. Nothing. Nothing in the basement. Mm -mm. <laughs> then we're dealing with a very clever individual here. The killer is not on the island or in the house, then where is he? 
Or she. I think it's obvious, Inspector. The killer is one of us! <laughs> no one can be trusted. Even me? I'm afraid so. That's absurd. You can count me out. I'm no killer. Perhaps that's what you want us to believe. As an actress, you're always on the lookout for a good script. Maybe you're looking out in the perfect mystery, a script to kill for. And what gives you the right to make the accusations? How do we know that you're not some serial killer? Oh, because he doesn't like cereal. <laughs> That's odd. No, I like bacon in the morning. No, I mean the audio message. I just remembered there were supposed to be ten of us, but only nine arrived. What happened to the tenth person? Only seven guests arrived. Seven guests and you two. That makes nine. There was another name on the list. Uh, LaRue, Margaret LaRue. LaRue! I'd like to see that list. Um, Clayhorn, Mims. I'm Clayhorn. I, I'm Miles. She's Mims. It's in the kitchen. I'll fetch it. Perhaps I'd better get it. Remember, you're still under suspicion. We wouldn't want anything unusual to happen now, would we? Just be safe. Next moment, she was snuffed away, snuffed away by a kiss like Kip and Harry. Who knows how this crazy life works? Uh, before we get too philosophical here, perhaps it was an accident. On that hour, it would have been suicide. Why would Dr. Prince want to kill himself? He had everything to live for. Are you kidding? In this place? None of us will ever leave this island alive! Heva, Heva, Heva! We're not dead yet. Not all of us, at least. I don't think it was suicide or an accident. I think someone rigged those hearing to fall on the doctor's head. Someone who spends all of her time in the kitchen! Give me a break, all right? Just like the break you gave Dr. Prince! You're right, I did I knew it. I snuck into the kitchen when none of you were looking, rearranged the pantry, and patiently waited for Dr. Prince to go in search of the list hidden in the canned goods. How stupid do you think I am? Could a booby trap the pantry? I believe her. Why, Miss Scarlet? Because I can't believe that an innocent young woman could be a cold-blooded killer. That's what people said about Lizzie Borden. <laughs> Once again, Heather is right. We have no proof. Mims cannot be considered more suspect than the rest of us. I say that we retire to our rooms until breakfast. Keep your doors locked and your guns handy. Just in case you two think you're going where, you're not. I've seen you two summer before. I'm going to figure out where. Clayhorn and Mims. It's Jack and Sarah Benda, escapees from Yorkshire Institution for criminally insane and considered extremely dangerous. Great! Don't tell me they're mass murderers! No, Miss Biggs, we're not even crazy. That's a matter of opinion. It's true, we are sent to the institution, committed by my younger brother. As the eldest in my family, I stood to gain control of the family business. When my brother realized he would have to share the wealth, he framed Mims and me for a crime we didn't commit. 
Escape was the only way to try and prove our innocence. <laughs> you expect us to believe that? No, Inspector, because you're a fathead and only choose to believe what you want. Well, she's gone. What do you mean, gone? Poof, vanished, disappeared, no trace of her. Look, some of the chocolate soldiers are missing. There's only six left. What do you make of it, Matthew? Well, there's six chocolate soldiers and six of us. Originally, there were ten. I got it! Someone is stealing the chocolate soldiers! Uh, Matthew, I don't think that's what it means. I got it! As each one of us disappears, so does another chocolate soldier. Oh, Matthew, it's so bizarre. That doesn't make sense. To me, there it makes complete sense. Naturally! Thank you. There weren't ten of us to begin with. There were only nine. The theory's wrong. Unless Margaret LaRue is dead. Which would mean that Emily's also dead. Or in grave danger. We have to find them. You have a minute to lose. Make a thorough search of the house and island immediately. Again? Then I'm with him. Sorry, sister. I'm with him. Why don't you come with me? Have a nice sister born on the island. The island. What about us? Search your conscience, Miss Cabenda. This is worse than being locked up in the nut house. It's certainly been one of the worst weekends of my life. Jack, if I asked you something, would you be honest with me? It depends. If it's anything about your looks, probably not. No, it's nothing like that. Promise me that you'll be honest with me, even if it's something you know I won't want to hear. Okay, I promise. Are you the killer? Nothing. It's pouring outside. Even if she is there, we'll never find her. We'll try again when the rain lets up. No need, Miss Devinda. We just found a body under the woodpile. <gasps> it's Emily Payne. She appears to have been stabbed by a harpoon. A harpoon? That's the silliest thing I've ever heard. Where would anybody get a harpoon? I can explain. Please do. <laughs> I brought it here to hug fish, but this morning I noticed that it disappeared from my room. In all the excitement, I forgot to mention it. You believe me, don't you, Heather? I want to, but I'm just confused. <laughs> not good enough. I'd like to search your room. For what? I'm not sure, but if there's something to be found, I'll find it. In that case, I ask that Heather joins us. You're crazy if you think I'm staying with these two. How did Emily get under the wool pile? What happened to Mr. Rue? I don't know. Maybe it's a setup of some kind. Miles? Clayhorn, there's only one possibility. Maybe Margaret isn't dead. But you said so yourself. I thought so, but I'm no doctor. If Margaret isn't dead and only pretending to be, then that would explain everything. You guard the stairs and I'll check the basement to make sure Miles isn't lying. Hurry! What are you doing? I found her behind the generator. How did she get there? I don't know. I'm sorry I doubted you. Something is not right here, and I'm going to figure out what. Oh, uh, if you'll excuse me, I need to powder my nose. Pressure uh, feeling to her? Either that, or you're standing much too close. Nothing escapes me, Mr. Bendo. Nothing. That's you, whoever you are. Nothing! You're a credit to law enforcement everywhere. Thank you. Mims, what happened? I'm Matthew. Mims was blown up in the bathroom. What? This is all we found for her. <laughs> Someone has switched her face powder for gunpowder. When she turned on the vanity lights, well, she never knew what happened. Could happen to any of us. Mims. Mims. Now what? It seems that the generator is running out of wood. Mims. Mims. I can't go on living without her. Shot. Hey, here comes now. Claire. 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 
whoever you are, very clever. Pin your gun that fast. Perhaps, Inspector, you're now last to inspect your gun. Please, I'm a policeman. Well, aren't you Horatio Mouse, who jumped out of the police force for accepting bribes? You're not a real police officer at all. Yes, but I work as a private investigator. But no less than a suspect than the rest of us. Satisfied? <laughs> We're not convinced. Stop the silly macho posturing. Look, there's only four left. Very absurd, Miss Biggs. What's wrong? The generator. It's almost out of wood. Any volunteers? Not on your life. How about you, Heather? I'll stay here. Thank you. Miles. I'll go. Keep your distance. Anything you'd like to talk about? Just stay where you are. Don't worry. I'm just as afraid of you as you are of me. Just don't come any closer. Heather? Dolores? <laughs> He's been shot. Matthew? What happened? Stay where you are, Mr. Pretty Boy. You're the killer. It's some sort of joke. It's no good, Matthew. Dolores and I were here the entire time. Someone hit me over the head when the lights went out. That's all I remember. That doesn't explain Miles. And I already explained the bump on my head. I'm sorry, Matthew. I really am. Could have been good together. Clean, but you could have cleaned it. There would have been time! You're beginning to sound like Miles. Let's not take any chances. Tie him up. Wait, what? Why this should hold him this morning. Jesus. Our rooms are right next door to each other, so we'll hear everything that's going on. Don't try anything. Otherwise, you'll get a face full of lead. I'm sorry, Matthew. I really am. Heather? Yes? Could you dispose of these bodies before you leave? for escaping from the institution. If you thought we were dead, we hoped you might forget about us. Very clever, Mr. Linda. Inspector Miles, I thought Matthew had shot you. That's what we wanted you to believe. We? Yes, me and Matthew thought by taking ourselves out the picture, we could catch the killer cold-handed. Oh, poor Matthew. Not really. Matthew. 
You see, Heather, I knew to kill him as I'd be, be you or the Lord. And by taking myself out of the picture, I knew one of you would tip your hand. And now if the Lord said, I'm afraid the killer has to be you. No, you're wrong. I thought Dolores was the killer, so I shot her before she had the chance to shoot me. Wrong. I only let Heather think she shot me. It was all an act. Then no one is dead and there isn't a killer at all? Hey, there's still some more to play on the audio message. What audio message? And so, my friends, my plan is to see if ten amateurs can write a perfectly good mystery over a weekend. If you survive, that is. If you don't get on each other's nerves, I'll reward each of you with ten thousand dollars. Good luck. It was all a joke. Very funny. So there's no killer? And no mystery. Except for the one we write. We still have a few hours before the moment comes. I say we get busy. But it's what? That's odd. Not really. If we work together, we can still do it. No, I mean, the chariots are soldiers. There's only one left. <gasps> <gasps> seven of these plays over the past two days. All of the, the week's worth of rehearsals and all the work leading up to it, uh, all uh, trimester long or year long. So can we grab a round of applause, please? Thank you. I got it myself. All right, well, I will miss you guys. And also, you will be getting drama medals at awards chapel. We're not gonna do it right now. We have to take down a backdrop that has to go back to California. So thank you guys so much. Yeah, this is rented. It's pretty cool. It's beautiful, right? California? Yeah. So thank you all and safe drive home. Take care. Bye.